Okay, um, so I am refilming the uh, fight that I introduced with the last video. Uh, the last video got cut short because my memory card got fully filled up. I've gone out and bought a bigger one, <laughs> which and I, I managed to get around to downloading all the stuff that was on it. Um, for some reason, before when I tried to do it, it was going to take like 50 hours, but it didn't take nearly that long this time. Anyway, so the um, I've... Uh, this is a different setup from what you saw before. Um, basically, the last, it's the same battle. Um, in the last battle, uh, we had a, a, a line of sort of pikes, a mixed pikes and swordsmen here, and then a reserve here with a couple of uh, flank protection units there, a couple of thousand men there. And essentially, what happened was the, um, uh, the, the uh, uh, Muslims just moved straight up. They left behind a, a unit here, a battle line, a short battle line here. And uh, they, they just um, used a shock and uh, then the combined effect of their archers upon the cavalry melee ability to try and break the line. And they were doing quite successful. It was looking quite close, but um, the uh, essentially the um, Frankish line was completely broken up, but they just managed to tip the scale, and, and the uh, uh, Muslim army broke um, a couple of units before the Frankish army would have bro broke, broke, would have broken, broke, would have broken. <laughs> um, and uh, when your army breaks, everybody becomes disrupted. You do have a chance; you can rally them next turn, but. Of course, the um, and then the Frankish army had the initiative, so they got the first turn, first go that next turn. So they managed to wipe out many already disrupted units, and that was the end of it. Now I'm trying something different. That's what I really like about um, these kind of this very simple game. It's very basic. You can try out different things, um, quite quickly because the scenarios do not take too long, and it holds my interest enough to um go back to the same scenario and try a different tactic. So um, the uh, I'll show you from here, from the Frankish side. So what they've done, they still have the same position, but um, they set up a bit further back. Um, there wasn't actually any need for that, but... Uh, Essentially, that these guys are going to stay, remain as they are. So that this flank will have some protection from the woods. Oh, yeah, and what I found in the last battle is that what I hadn't um, fully checked out is that you have here a um, pike unit. Uh, you can't see that. Sorry, it's all a bit blurry. Um, but basically, they have um, a defense of two. Uh, so even though they're very, uh, whilst the swordsmen have a defence of four, basic, so the pikes get their, their huge benefit against the cavalry is offset a bit by their basic kind of like weakness. But so, um, but they're still a bit better on defence against the cavalry than, than the swordsmen. So I've got a solid line of pike here, some swordsmen to back them up here, and then... Um, we have a division here, and all of these will be able to move independently via their leader, Charles Martel, Mantel, here. And uh, essentially what he's hoping is that either the, the, the um, Muslims will charge here, try and break that line, then he'll come around the flank. Or if they don't charge, then he'll come around the flank anyway and release that battle line forward too. So you see this is handily positioned between the woods here and this clump of woods here so they can just move straight up without much disruption except for the built up area there. So that's the Frankish plan of attack. Um, it's a bit difficult for me to take you around to the uh, Muslim side but let's have a quick look because it's, uh, it's always nice I find to... Oh sorry you've got a terrible glare there haven't you? I'll take it off to the side. It's always nice to have a look at the uh, other um, you know, the battle from one side and then from the opponent's side, because it gives you quite a different perspective often, does it not? So that is the view from the Muslim side. They have woods in the way here. So essentially what the thought was, was they've um, lined up all their cavalry at the front and the um, mounted archers here. And there's one reserve there which can move independently with the zero value leader. Um, 
So the, the idea being that these ones are going to move forwards. These will get dragged back by the woods, but essentially they will act as flank protection against that division. And so they're hoping to take out that force before that force become, become that effective upon them. So really it's this portion that is going to tell because they have the archers adding their bonus. So it's uh, it's like the last one really. It's going to be a race to break to the break point. Who can get the other two at quickest? And um, we shall see. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't feel it's optimum setup for the Muslims, but against this, I'm not sure what else to do because I suppose I could move further, um, but then I'm just. Yeah, maybe that would be better, but I don't want to get flanked by the on um, by these fellows. You know, I don't. So if I move further here, then these could sort of bash in, and as I move up, these will be able to flank me that side. So I'd, that's going to sort of be be a major threat anyway. So I'll leave that as a major threat. Hold that flank. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll try it again after after Muslim disaster with a different setup for them. And I think, I don't know, this is supposed to be quite a balanced scenario, but for me, my feeling is it is going to be hard for the Muslims to win it. Um, just because of uh, the preponderance of Frankish forces and their ability to manoeuvre independently. So without further ado, let's get going. So we roll for initiative and... Uh, how do we do that the first turn? I forget. So, um, the initiative value, which is equal to the army's discipline, army's discipline, that's five. They have higher discipline than seven, but they get plus two for their leader. Oh, yeah, so if we have the same initiative value, you, we just roll a die. And uh, so, um, I'll be saying that the black represents the red. So I've got the red die here. Oh, that's two sixes. <laughs> okay, so the Franks have the initiative the first turn. They can choose whether to go first. And they are going to remain as they are, waiting for the Muslims to move up. So, and so that's not the first, that's not a recorded turn because we don't start recording the turns yet. Um, this is essentially like the pre battle standoff um, so the Muslims are going to do what they had to do there's no point in waiting around so they charge uh, my only question is if, if they can get through that successfully uh, bah, 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 bah. so that's one extra movement point to move through that's no problem 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 they've all got movement of 16 so they're off. And um, so essentially what we have is a, a get the, the attacks are on a differential. And maybe I'll give, give you a quick look at the sheet here. Um, so on nought you get no effect, no effect, then defender disrupted, no effect on a seven. Ignore... Ignore this column of figures, it's nonsensical. I don't, I think it's like a mistake, maybe something they're thinking of bringing into the rules but was dropped but was printed up as a mistake. So we're looking at this on 2d6. So on a 7, you nearly it's always, nearly always no effect. Defender disrupted, attacker disrupted, defender disrupted. So um, the attackers here will be 6 against. Um, uh, two for the pikes, so they will be on the plus four column, but then the pikes give two less shifts down, so we will be on the zero column. If we were attacking against the, um, it was six against the swordsman on four, then we would be on the plus two. Um, yeah, so the pikemen give a better defensive benefit. Um, bah, 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 but we have to get through that pike wall. There's no other way. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I made a mistake when I played the last game. Is that I gave I I've been talking about the shock advantages. And the Muslims don't actually get that. Um, 
So they're not really like shot cavalry, they're more skirmish cavalry. Okay, and these are going through the woods. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 13, 14. Okay, they've actually made it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay. So they contacted that side and they're going to be completely flanked and mown down in droves. Okay. <laughs> not good, not good, not good, no. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead. Um, I will resolve the combat and come back. Okay, I've actually made an adjustment, so I decided to, to reset up. And I, I was hoping that this line would curve round as they, they slowed down in the woods, but they didn't because the cavalry could move so far. So I've actually made these four units a separate cavalry line over there. Um, so you see that this can wrap around slightly, but uh, that's going to be not too much of a worry, we hope. Um, okay. Okay, I'm um, sorry about the video quality here, it's quite dim light and uh, my main uh, headlight's not working. Um, anyway, so you can see the result of the attack, it actually was on the uh, 1 to 2 differential column because the archers coming in, at least with most of the units, assisted a lot. Um, otherwise we would have had, there's one um, disruption on the uh, Muslim side and you can see these white disruptions. On the Frankish side. So now we go to the Frankish turn and uh, I think that without further delay they're just going to release their um, flanking units here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every line has to move as fast as the slowest. Fortunately these all have the same speed. Okay, so that's their move, and I will roll for their attack. Um, the, you can only sort of com release a line or command others in a turn, so I cannot also release this line, which would just mean that... Oh no, actually, that one cannot... He's in a zone of control. Otherwise, if he was, say, here, he could turn around to start developing that line. Something I perhaps should have done in this setup, but no, I wanted a second line for security. Okay, so this envelopment does actually tell an effect because you have two attacks um, on the one unit, um, one of which succeeded in, in disrupting it. Uh, so the pikemen are attacking at three against defence of four in the main, uh, non-disrupted units. Um, so they're actually quite fortunate to get two disruptions. They get one, they got one um, the attacker disrupted and uh, the, prior to that in their movement phase these disrupted units tried to rally only one of them succeeded oh and uh, they did uh, they, sorry they got a further disruption so there's the first unit loss here and the pikemen automatically have to move forward into the um, space so that unit goes over on the breakpoint track to start marking and the death knell. Okay, so we go to so so that starts the first turn. As any turn where you have some disruptions counts as the first turn. So that was the first turn. Now I move to the second turn, and uh, the the Franks gave the had the initiative. They gave it to the. Um, they chose to go second, so they still have the initiative, so we have to roll. If they roll seven or less, they retain it. No, so it goes over to the Muslims. So do they want to go first or second? If Generally, if you've got lots to rally, you want to go first. If you want to get a charge in on the disrupted units, you want to go first. Otherwise, you know, you might want to go second to see what the enemy does to respond to that. Um... We want to go first to get charge in here to stop these units from swinging around too handily. So that's a line, battle line move that goes in and on the combat. So um, we have six against four defense. 
So units, for instance, swordsmen have three on attack, four on defence. These um, sort of um, handy horsemen have six on attack, four on defence. So it varies like that. And the spikes are three on attack, two on defence, but obviously bonus against the horses. Okay, so we, that means a six against the four is on one to two column. And a seven is no effect. Next unit gets its individual attack and seven no effect. Eight, that's a defender disrupted. And then the last one, he's attacking six against two now. So he's on the plus four column, goes up. And on a three, unfortunate, that's attacker disrupted. The only chance of that happening on this column. So I will roll these separately and come back. In fact, just to illustrate, so this one's disrupted. He's disrupted again on a successful attack. And so this means he will flee. On a flee result, on a two to seven, you actually just remove the unit from the board and it goes to the, may go to the breakpoint track, but basically it's added to the breakpoint track. So he moves up. But now we have the situation where we have uh, mounted archers that, and um, they get double, they, they're at one point attack and defense. The double up, adjacent range um so it's two against the pikemen the pikemen defense of two so it's not too bad but it's not as great as the other horses so on the zero column the ten that's actually no effect i'll keep rolling um now i just realized my mistake here having this line so close because there's no stacking in this scenario this unit was disrupted again. It didn't get a flee or route result, so um, it didn't. It got a f so it has to flee or route. It didn't get an immediate removal, so it has to retreat, but it can't because of the stacking. So that's <laughs> that takes it off. Now here, this unit's disrupted. Disrupted units do not have to attack, which is generally wise because um, you can have attackers disrupt disrupted and then that would mean loss or fleeing of that unit but um behind him there's archers so that can fire over on it with effective power of one against two on the so on the minus one we've got eight which is a disruption so that works quite handily you can see that um if i'll show you the chart again um you can see that even on the lower differentials of minus one, minus two, minus three, down to minus four. There's still a lot of DDs, which is defender disrupted. Okay, you get increased ADs, so attacker disruption possibilities, but you still often have a fair chance of disrupting your foe. So it's, you know, not, not too bad. So it's not like a sort of, you know, one to one or one to two attacks. Well, you know, it could be like that. It just depends how you lay out your combat results table, doesn't it? Okay, we got seven, no effect. Okay, so that's the end of the Muslims um, part of that turn and second turn. So now we go to the Franks. So what we have here is um, units can either rally or move. So generally I move first and then rally the, the ones that didn't move. Um, you can... If you're in zone of control, you can't move out unless your opponent is disrupted. So these disrupted units here can't. These swordsmen can move up to fill the gap. Three, he can move over there, like this one. Um, this one can move back, but it only has enough to turn around, which will put it in place. There's enough movement, three points are disrupted to turn it around slightly, which is, means it's open for a flank attack, so it's not, no point in trying to move it. Um, I just have to try and rally it. Now these guys here are all under independent movement, so they can move out quite handily. Um, that would be six. Moving out. Then I think we'll have these come in. So three, four, five, six, seven, three, and then four. So that's seven. Okay. So 
So he's lost command control of a couple of units there now because they're out of his range, but you know their job is to hold them off. Okay, so for the rallies we need fives um, so that they're not rallying very quickly, these fellows. No. Oh, there's no rallies there. Okay, and the combat's I will roll and come back. Okay, so at the end of the second turn, we got some, uh, this is the uh, um, uh, Al Rahman, the um, Muslim leader. We got a rout here. We got two disruptions here, one disruption on the Frankish side here. So they're holding nicely there. They might be able to take them out. And uh, the Frankish side is quite disrupted here. We've still got some in reserve. So, uh, and then this is the, the plan is coming over to take, take them on the flank or, and or rear. So we move into turn three and rolling for initiative. Um, it was the Muslims that had it for us. So they got seven discipline, zero for their leaders, seven. So they retain initiative. So they will decide to go first because they want to rally. Okay, if you rally, you can't move. Uh, the, the man, the man, that individual unit can't move if it rallies. Um, so they were quite successful on their rallies. They have one disruption left there and this one there. Um, now for their attacks. If you have a unit in your zone of control, you have to attack it. So um, unless you're disrupted. Oh, I just forgot to say at the end of uh, turn two, we were standing at. 12 breaks to 9 break points, um, which is, okay, the French break on 40, the uh, um, Muslims on 35, so uh, we just got another um, Frankish break, so now we're on to 9, 10, 12 each. I must say, I, I do like the um, the combat results table because with no effect on a roll of 7, which obviously is a commonest roll on 2d6, uh, all except on plus 4 or uh, minus 4 or, or, or 10 plus differential, um, it's, it very nicely means that you can have you know very strong units against disrupted units, but that disrupted unit still gets a fairly good chance of a no effect attack against it, so it can hang in there a bit longer than you might think, so we don't get armies crumbling too quickly. Um, you know, so they don't just evaporate, bang, bang, then they're gone. It's a, you know, it's, it's a small, subtle effect, but it shows to me the, the, the careful thought that went into that results table. Okay, so... Um, the Franks on the Franks turn, um, they've got their, their flanks coming into action. This is holding nicely and uh, they're running out of replacements here, but they're also flanking around on this side. So <coughs> here is the uh, end of the third turn. And um, there's a couple of routed units here on the uh, Muslim side. And then the leader and his mobile reserve single unit there. And you can see that the... Um, uh, the independent um, flanking manoeuvre here is already proving its worth. And in fact, it was very interesting how um, the swordsmen straight against the cavalry um, have proved very effective themselves. Um, it does depend on a bit of luck, um, but not only that, it's not just a combination of forces. Um, and so I think, I'll sort of just quickly film this because it's difficult. For, Got five minutes spare, which I can do it now. Um, just to say that I won't sort of play out the whole game. Um, I hope to uh, come back and just give some reflections upon um the series as a whole. Um, it might it, it might be um my kind of like ongoing thoughts, and then uh, maybe record something else later if I feel like it. So, um. I apologise for the quality of the video and the kind of like the way things just uh, sometimes my videos just cut short but uh, that, I shouldn't really have to apologise it is what it is and if you, if you like it you like it if you if you don't then, then don't don't take it it's fine um, 
leave any comments if there's any questions you have about the series, uh, the, 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 the game. And uh, I'll do my best to answer them because I intend to be playing it over the next uh, few weeks on and off when I have the opportunity. So um, I think we're going to see a, um, uh, a Frankish victory here. Um, but obviously I'd like to play it, play it out. We've got the, um, uh, the Muslims are already halfway on their way to breaking point. Uh, the Franks not quite, just a bit over a third of the way. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll try and play a few more turns now. Maybe I'll be able to add them on to this later. So the all-important initiative roll at the start of the fourth turn, and the um, Franks lost uh, an, the initiative which they had. So it goes over to the... Um, to the um, to the Muslims and it's interesting because in the original game as printed um, the initiative role de is determines who goes first at the start of the game and then you just take it in turn so it always alternates in the same fashion in the errata um, you roll every turn and that does make quite a big difference because then it becomes a very important Obviously it's important on the first turn in the original on the games that originally was printed but in the rata it makes it a huge can make it a hugely decisive factor i think in that if you have a broken a disrupted units and you need to reform that line um, or redress that line you want the initiative so that you can rally those before your opponent can take them out. Um, so I do sort of have a question whether I played, I think my first game I played with the, the rule as it's as written and then the second and this game I'm playing with it with the um, the errata at rule and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I like it as much because it it does put a sort of attention factor in, but it, it puts a luck factor in, in the, in the swing. So I might, I think the next game I'm going to revert back to the original rule. Obviously, the way it stands, you could um, have two turns in a row. Um, I'm going last, previous turn, and first, the next turn. Which, again, on the attack, that could be doubly effective. Well, things are changing. So um, the Muslims took the the first um, go of this fourth turn, and uh, they've completely broken through the original Frankish line. There, these units are all disrupted. There's only one undisrupted unit here. This Frankish portion is fresh, and uh, you can see they're beating off the foe. But um. These, there's going to be a, basically a mess of a melee there, and that's going to tell it. And the other thing is, is that the Franks are now on uh, 24 disrupt on the breakpoint track, while the Muslims are on 18. But then it's the Frankish turn, the Frankish turn, part of the turn to go. Well, after some miraculous rallying, the Franks only have two disrupted units left, and they've hit the flank here. And this, as per um, rule specifications, the line here has to start curling round. So that's something you don't have much tactical control of. You do have certain tactical control in the sense that, say, if this unit was back here and I had a choice either to go here or to come round here. If he had gone here, then it would have pushed this whole line sort of further that way. If I choose to let it push further that way, as it were. So that's just to illustrate a little bit of... Um, on the spot control that you do have of events and now to roll for the Frankish attacks. Um, remember that these are all archer mounted archers, not nearly as strong as the regular cavalry units. So um, this rock line might be rolled up quite quickly, leaving the Muslims with these left surrounded. And that is the end of the fourth turn. The um, Muslims have reached break point. So the fifth turn starts, and I will roll for the initiative to see if the um, Muslims keep it. 
the rule of eight, so no, they lose it. So the Muslim goes over to the Frank, the initiative goes over to the Franks. And now I have to roll under their um, initiative value to see, well, I have to roll over it for them to break, under it for them not to break this turn. And that's a five, so they don't break this turn. But I have to roll again, beginning of next. So, um, the Franks um, have their movement, so these ones are all in zones of control, they stay where they are. These ones continue their movement. Although these are actually independent movers, so they don't have to move as per regulations. Three, four, five, six, seven. Three. Seven, eight, three. In fact, he's going to go over here because we've got a couple of routed um, Muslims there who may come back. Okay, and these ones have to take regulation maneuver because that's a battle line. One, two, three, four, six. Okay, and their attacks. So that is the end of the fifth turn, and um, we have the, uh, the Muslim leader charged in to, against the uh, Frankish leader here, as it happened, trying to give some aid to his uh, flank, and uh, disrupted. Um, there's a couple of two, two units have rallied back here, so there is some hope, some hope, a slim hope, I think, at the beginning of the sixth turn, and... Um, Franks retain the initiative, and the uh, Muslims, again, do not break, so their luck is holding for the moment. The end of the turn, and the Franks have reached break point. It's proving that the um, the discipline of the Muslim army is enabling them to rally, even though they they suffer more disruptions, they recover quicker. So, beginning of the seventh turn. Do the Franks retain initiative? Yes, they do. Does their army break? No, it doesn't. Does the Muslim army break? Yes, it does. Well, they lasted two turns without breaking, but finally it's happened, so this could be the telling, 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 telling turn. Okay, so any unit that is not disrupted is disrupted, and any unit that is disrupted flees, which does mean that they are eliminated on a to seven. So I'll just roll for that one now. So he's not eliminated, has to flee, but actually can't because he's in zones of control, so he is eliminated. That one's likewise flees. Eight and the leader unit. So it flees even further away. Okay, so the Frankish attacks, well, movement first. So at the beginning of the Muslim seventh turn, this is the, uh, as it stands. Um, I just, all of the Muslim units are disrupted. Uh, I'm just going to roll for the rallies. You cannot move if you um, rally. Um, and these units cannot move out of zones controls anyway, so they couldn't move, sort of clear. I think it's over for the Muslims. So that's the end of the turn. Um, and uh, we have three uh, for the leader rallied and three of his units. But we have an interesting question now because um, strictly the game should continue to the 20th turn. And so the, um, uh, the Franks are going to break. Because they have to just keep rolling till they do. Um, so, but if we ended at this point, it's quite clear that that's a, a, a quite a strong um, Frankish victory, even though they lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11,000 out of their 30,000 votes. Um, 
So maybe it's correct, is that both armies break and both win so-called tactical victory because of that, which means that neither of them won, seeing as they both could claim something. Let's just roll for the initiative. Okay, so the initiative actually goes to the Muslims, and for the Turkish break, and yes, they break. So, um, I don't know, it's, uh, I had this the last time I played this game as well, is that there's a kind of a strange situation when both armies break, because um, the rules are quite clear that a broken army is basically a dead army, but if you both break at the same, if, if you break, say, and then you rally a lot of men, and then your opponent breaks, then um, you can deal a lot of damage back to them. Um, so it could sort of swing back and forth. So I think unless you get a, you break the other fellow far ahead of your break point being reached, you're going to reach this basic kind of stalemate. Each army is exhausted. So the end of the uh, ninth turn, and I think I'm going to leave the battle at this point um, because uh, I am called away. Um, but uh, essentially, the um, <laughs> it's indecisive, but I'm tempted to call it a surprising Muslim victory because, um, uh, okay, the uh, Charles Mantel has, has rallied some of his forces here and is moving back into the attack. But the Muslims, these ones will rally soon enough. These ones are all strong. And uh, yeah, he is a bit surrounded, but um, there's probably going to be a Muslim. Let's see if the Muslims get initiative next turn. No, they lose the initiative, so it goes over to the Franks. So on the Frankish initiative, oh, who can tell? I think this could swing back and forth. Um, with just dregs of either side surviving. Okay, and here it stands, the end of the 11th turn. And finally, the, um, the greater mass of the Frankish forces took their toll, taking out the Muslim leader, a lone unit here, a lone unit there. And um, that's the end of the battle. I, it feels a bit uncomfortable because of that um, combined break point effect. Uh, there's something in me that would rather, when an army breaks, it actually starts physically f flooding back. Um, but then, you know, it might be, one has to take everything simulated with a pinch of salt. I find a lot of sort of just imaginative justification is I use in, in these games. So I say, okay, that's that army, according to the rules, completely broke, but then the next turn most of them rallied, so the effect, of the overall effect, is that the army didn't actually break, it wavered, but it held. So though the rules say, okay, that's reached break point, you rolled and you've broken, and because of subsequent effect, I have to count that as a, they didn't break and flee, they looked like they were going to, but they didn't. And that's a better way to take it. So you can see that this fight was in the balance at the end there. Both sides had reached their exhaustion level. And it was really just because of the fact that the um, Franks had the edge in, the, in their flanking manoeuvre, which had surrounded the main force here. So they could be attacking on with flank benefits, whilst the um, Muslims had been disrupted. They had some here, they had some here. And their main mass there, so that, I don't mean disrupted in the rules, but I mean they have been their force was broken up and uh, not able to defend its flanks well enough. And so I, th I think that was a justified victory. I'd, what I'd like to do now is play this scenario one more time and see if can make concerted effort to get a win for the Muslims because I nearly always find I favour one side than the other, and often that's the side that ends up winning <laughs> surprisingly because. I suppose I don't just put enough effort in the defence or the offence of the other side. So now I, I'm going to set up 
Um, as soon as I get an opportunity, I will set up the Franks, maybe in the same fashion or in a different fashion, more boringly. And but anyway, to find out how I can defeat them with this Muslim cavalry force.